it's great to have the Abbey Theatre come to the Lime Tree. They've been, we've been open nearly six years now and this is the third time to come. So it comes maybe every, every two years. But it's, I mean, the Abbey Theatre is our national theatre. It's um, hugely supported by the Arts Council, by the government. And so therefore, you know, taxpayers are uh, from all over the country are supporting the organisation. And so it's really important that the Abbey comes out on tour as regularly as possible. It's a very expensive thing to do, to tour a theatre of the scale that the Abbey does. But uh, so, uh, you know, they, they, they have made the decision that they want to come out as often as they can. And we're delighted, of course, that they came. They're coming to open the show in Limerick. And that's the key thing. That they are now trying to open a new show outside of Dublin at least once a year. So the show that they're opening in 2018 is in the Lime Tree in Limerick. So it's a real coup for us. We're delighted. Well, I suppose a combination of uh, the fact they've been here before and that we would cultivate our relationship with the Abbey. I'd be constantly in touch with them and saying, you know, asking them what their plans are. Sarah Lynch, who is a producer at the Abbey, is from Limerick and I know Sarah for a long time. She used to work with Druid. So she uh, called me before Christmas to say that they were thinking of doing this. And I suppose it, as well as it would depend on our reaction. So of course, naturally enough, I was delighted at the news and said, yes, definitely come here. And yes, please do open the show here. We'd be thrilled. And really, that's how it, how it happened. We opened the Lime Tree itself in October 2012 with a production from the Abbey. So we've developed a really good relationship with the organisation and it's really important that that's nurtured. Jimmy's Hall is an absolutely fascinating story. Uh, Jimmy Gralton was a farmer in County Leitrim. He actually, in his early late teens and early 20s he was involved with the Easter Rising and was very was a great um, follower of James Connolly and would have uh, espoused his views, his socialist views. He emigrated to New York in the 1920s, uh, worked, uh, was very involved in union uh, activities in New York and became a member in fact of the Communist Party which, which was uh, neither profitable or, or uh, it, it, it caused him a lot of trouble in New York as well. So he came back to Ireland when, uh, actually, well, he came back in the early 20s. He set up the hall. He, he, he was in a, on his farmer's uh, father's land in, in County Leitrim. And he brought back a gramophone with him. And he brought back all these ideas about social reform and about tackling poverty and exclusion. Um, you know, you're talking about the, uh, the early part of last century in Ireland primary education was all that was available to most people. There was no secondary school education. So he set up the hall, you know, had dances, uh, meetings, a little bit of some classes. And he really, it was, it was like a vibrant hub in the, in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Uh, but all the people around locally gathered in that hall and they danced and they learned how to do the Charleston. He brought all, you know, he, he, they say that the first time jazz was heard in Ireland was in Jimmy Gralton's hall because he brought up back the records from, from New York. And uh, so there was a, a real free spirit and, you know, people were, you, coming out to dances and learning the Charleston and learning about about I suppose getting some education on, on uh, as well on, on the whole social element of things where, where they could improve their lives and it, it came afoul very quickly of the establishment of the church and of the state because I suppose he was teaching um, communist uh, principles and certainly communism in Ireland in the 1930s a lot of people saw it as you know you know they did not want to see what happened in Soviet Russia uh, expanding into into Western Europe so the forces of the state came together with the church and they passed there was a, a lot of doing and throwing but they passed eventually the local TDs insisted that the doll pass a deportation order on Jimmy uh, because of what he was doing um, so he went on the run for about six months, uh, the all was closed, he went on the run and he was caught in County Cork in August 1933 and was put back on the boat and even though he was an Irishman, uh, he was deported from the state and, and so then his story disappeared. Nobody ever, you know, I'm sure the people in County Leitrim in Clitokert where, where, where it all happened remembered him and in fact his hall is mentioned in John McGarren's memoir. Uh, he, John McGarren, went back to live in that part of County Leitrim where, where Jimmy's Hall was. And so it's, I, it may well still exist as a ruin, but he, um, it, it, 
just I suppose the fact that it it was he was a communist and or he was, you know and he was pushing for very left wing ideas that he was seen as, he was very much seen as a threat by the church and by by the state uh, the established parties so nobody told his story or his story didn't appear in any history books and so it was forgotten and most of the country didn't really know about it until um, Ken Loach, uh, the great filmmaker, made a film about it in 2014. It actually featured uh, during the Cannes Film Festival. And that's when the, the story came back to prominence. Uh, and it was the, 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 the man who wrote the screenplay, Paul Laverty, he adapted it for the Abbey. And then the Abbey put it on as a play and, and opened it. In fact, it was the first time the Abbey Theatre was, uh, was, in fact, I think performed it in County Leitrim. They opened the play. The very, very first performance of the play was in the parish hall in the, 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 the parish where, where Jimmy came from. Not the original Jimmy's Hall, because as I say, that's a ruin now, but certainly they, they opened it in, in a small parish hall in County Leitrim. So, uh, amazing story. And I suppose the, another element of it is the fact that after that, uh, after that they, they closed his dance hall, there was a law passed uh, by the Zoll shortly, about a year later, which um, allow may basically anybody who wants to hold a public event has to get where there's music and singing has to get a public music and singing license and that's the law to this day the lime tree every venue in the country has to go to the district court every September to get a public music and singing license and that's as a result of Jimmy's Hall because the the church and state state mostly they 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 allowed parish halls to be built subsequently and as you saw all every every parish in ireland has a parish hall but it was under the control of the local parish so that and then they would then go to the court for permission to have a dance and that's the way it's been ever since so that they could control what was going on inside those four walls uh, you know what the dances were that it was you know nice you know uh, properly supervised dancing, not like what Jimmy got up to with with the, peop the people in the parish of Kiltokert. So we're still actually living today. It's still part of our. Um, th th we've still got that legacy that 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 law. Uh, and I, I don't know if it, if it exists anywhere else in the world, but certainly we have to. Everybody has to get a, a public music and singing license from the district court every year. So yeah, it runs from. Uh, Saturday the 14th to the 21st, eight performances in total. So we have uh, we have plenty of tickets left. Uh, so we're uh, hoping that uh, the audiences will come out in great numbers. The, the good weather is always a, is always a way to keep people away from the theatre. But I, what I'm saying to everybody is, you know, we're all a bit tired nearly at this stage, if it's possible to say, of, of the really hot summer, sun, sunny weather. So come for a nice, in a nice cool, a nice night in the nice cool theatre, and you'll you'll really enjoy the show. It's just superb, fantastic. It's full of colour, it's full of life, full of music, uh, fantastic acting, really top quality production values. Um, so book the tickets now. We're online www.limetreetheatre.ie, and then the. Uh, the, the uh, box office is open on 0619534400. So yeah, it runs from uh, Saturday the 14th to the 21st, eight performances in total. So we have, uh, we have plenty of tickets left, uh, so we're uh, hoping that uh, the audiences will come out in great numbers. The, the good weather is always, a, is always a way to keep people away from the theatre, but I, what I'm saying to everybody is, you know, we're all a bit tired nearly at this stage, if it's possible to say, of, of the really hot summer, sun, sunny weather. So come for a nice, in a nice cool, a nice night in the nice cool theatre, and you'll you'll really enjoy the show. It's just superb, fantastic. It's full of colour, it's full of life, full of music, uh, fantastic acting, really top quality production values. Um, so book the tickets now. We're online www.limetreetheatre.ie, and then the. Uh, the, the uh, box office is open on 0619534400.